just giving them signals uh, to um, to silence. To silence. Is Kenny coming back? Huh? <laughs> okay. So we're gathered in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. So good morning. Good morning, Father. So, uh, so this is uh, Saturday morning's Mass. And uh, so the, uh, this morning we're praying for uh, Christine and uh, Amante, um, who are celebrating uh, 39 years of, uh, of uh, marriage today. So congratulations to uh, Deacon Amante and uh, Christine. And so the, uh, and we have uh, two other birthdays this weekend as well. Um, the uh, Ron O'Gella and uh, Pam O'Gella. And so both of them are 39 again. Again. <laughs> so let us uh, ask the Lord to bless us now, be with us, and to listen to all uh, the prayers in our hearts today. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. God our Father, by the waters of baptism you gave new life to the faithful. May we not succumb to the influence of evil, but remain true to your gift of life. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. And so it was that the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had a time of peace. Through the help of the Holy Spirit, it was strengthened and grew in numbers as it lived in reference for the Lord. As Peter was passing through every region, he went down to the Holy Ones living in Lydda. There he found a man named Anas, who had been confined to bed for eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Anas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. He got up at once and all the inhabitants of Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa, there was a woman named Tabitha, who was a believer. She was completely occupied with good deeds and almsgiving. Now during those days, she fell sick and died. So after washing her, they laid her out in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. When he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs, where all the widows came to him weeping and showing him the tunics and cloaks that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter sent them all out and knelt down and prayed. Then he turned to her body and said, Tabitha, rise up. She opened her eyes, saw Peter, and sat up. He gave her his hand and raised her up. And when he had called the holy ones and the widows, he presented her alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many came to believe in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Alleluia. Alleluia. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. Alleluia. Alleluia. O Lord, I am your servant. 
I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. And a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Many of the disciples of Jesus were listening, said, This is a hard saying. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The word I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the ones who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you, that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. As a result of this, many disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer walked with him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you want to leave also? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come, we have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, the, uh, uh, so people listening said, uh, This is a hard saying. And uh, it's interesting, uh, all of us find some passage or other of the Bible uh, a hard saying. And uh, so we have to kind of wrestle with it and uh, chew it over and over. And, um, but as we grow in experience and that, the, um, you know, like 20 years ago we might have found, found something a hard saying. And then you come to read it, oh, that's what it means. It's because we've grown. Uh, our experiences of life and that have grown. So in the, uh, the first reading today, the, um, uh, many came to believe because of uh, the miracles um, that uh, they saw Peter and that do. And uh, I suppose it, it would incline you to uh, um, kind of to follow them if, uh, if they did the miracles. But, you also have to be careful because um, uh, we often see on tele-evangelist shows and that uh, people throwing away canes and, and that. But usually six months later they're back on the canes again and in the wheelchairs. It's, um, it's a phenomenon that, that happens and it's well documented uh, that uh, you know, these uh, uh, cures uh, tend to be only short-lived and that. So the, um, uh, and so there's something built into us that uh, uh, seems that we, we want to see the spectacular, we want to see uh, the miracle in our lives. And so we go running off to various places, we hear that you know, something spe you know, spectacular has happened here or there. And we go running off and, um, and yet we fail to see the greatest miracle that happens right before our eyes every day changing uh, bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. And so the, um, and see, if we only think that God works in the extraordinary, um, then we're never going to find him in our ordinary life. And that's where we find God. We find God in the mundane uh, of our ordinary life. The, um, that's uh, St. Benedict, he wrote his rule, uh, completely based around that uh, if you can't find God here, you're not going to find him out there. And uh, Benedict hated uh, travelling monks that um, would go here or go there. There was a, a thing, uh, it came about with Augustine, uh, ex uh, Festus Expectorans. Uh, when Augustine was uh, kind of um, wandering with uh, some, of, some of the faith, 
uh, his mentor was telling him, oh, when Festus comes, he'll have all the answers. And eventually Festus did turn up, but he didn't have all the answers. And, uh, and so we've got that, you know, if only I hear the right uh, core, the right lecture, if only I read the right book, I'll have all the answers. Uh, and it's not that way. And so in Benedict's time, there was many monks and they were going from here to there to the other, uh, looking for God in all these places. But Benedict said, you're not going to find him in the spectacular. God always works in the simple. And if you can't find him in your everyday life, um, then you're not going to find him anywhere. And so, and because if we expect to see him in the spectacular, we don't look for him in the ordinary. And this is where God works, is in uh, the ordinary. So, so most of our life then, we don't look for him because we don't think we're going to find him in our ordinary life. And that's where we, uh, we need uh, to find him, is in the ordinariness of our lives. And, and that's where he comes to us all the time and he's with us. And so, and, uh, so to appreciate the miracles that do happen right before us, right before our eyes. And so let us pray this morning. Uh, our response, Risen Lord, hear us. Risen Lord, Risen. hear us. Many of Jesus' admirers found his teaching on himself as the bread of life too difficult to accept, and so they left him. We pray for those who struggle today to keep faith in the Eucharist. We pray. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear, hear us. us. Benedict wrote his rule for all who truly seek God. May we aspire to this always in our lives, we pray. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear us. us. The Eucharist is the source and summit of our spirituality. May we grow in ever greater appreciation of the centrality of the Eucharist in our lives, we pray. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear us. That those who attend to our church linen investments, making, repairing, cleaning, and washing, do so with the love of Tabitha, who in her sewing lived a life of charity, always doing good for others. We pray. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear us. us. The Saint Fidelis of Sigmaringen, missionary to Switzerland during the post-Reformation years, will pray that lingering bitterness or suspicion between Christian groups be resolved into a deep quest for full unity in Christ. We pray. Risen, Risen Lord, hear us. And let us make our own special prayer now to the Lord. Father, through the power of the Spirit, help us to serve you in holiness and justice and to find you in the mundane of my life. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, and come for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, become our spiritual drink. Thus have you God forever. And let us pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. And let us pray. Lord, accept these gifts from your family. May we hold fast to the life you have given us and come to eternal gifts you promised. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise you with greater joy than ever in this Easter season when Christ became our Paschal sacrifice. He is still our priest, our advocate, who always pleads our cause. Christ is the victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. The joys of the resurrection renews the whole world, while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, the death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. Give, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, be shed for you and for all, so that sins will be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread and this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world and make us grow in love together with Francis our Pope, Jose our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with her husband, Saint Joseph, with the Apostles, the Martyrs and all the Saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. <coughs> Amen. Amen. And let us pray now in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every fear and evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety to wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. Peace. So peace. 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 Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant, Grant us peace. peace. And this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Lord, watch over those who have saved in Christ. May we who are redeemed by his suffering and death always rejoice in his resurrection. For his Lord forever and ever. Amen. So Pat was uh, in court uh, and he was up before the judge for stealing an overcoat. And uh, so the, uh, the judge was looking at him and he says, weren't you here three years ago for the same offence? And he says, uh, yes Lord, I was. It's, uh, but how long do you think overcoats last? <laughs> so let us ask the Lord now to bless us, be with us, and to be especially mindful of our families and friends. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Also. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. And the Mass is ended. Let's go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you, Father.